All right, so for those who are just tuning in, we're about to spectate a 1v1 high-rated Age of Empires 2 game. It's going to be on the map Salt Marsh between my viewers as part of my weekly Twitch TV live streams. If you want to get in on this, you can find my live stream schedule by going to my Twitch page and scrolling underneath the video player there. And if you follow me on Facebook and Twitter, you will get updates on when we're streaming next. So, without further ado, let's jump straight into the game. Curious to see what two civilizations these players random today. And during the commentary as, uh... Ooh, Malians versus Celts. Cool. During the commentary, I'll be giving you guys just an overview of the strategies, civilizations, and as well as all sorts of tips to overall improve your Age of Empires 2 gameplay. Now, if you want to get in on the action, I definitely encourage you to watch my Night Rush tutorial first. Link in the video description below. I also happen to have a Malian civilization overview, which might help you learn a little bit more about what this civ is all about. Malians versus Celts. A little bit of overlap between these civs in terms of their strengths, so... This is going to be a great game. And of course we're playing on Salt Marsh, which is different in the expansions, in that there is significantly less fish. It's just a very different map overall. So, this is the type of thing where we could expect to see demolition ships or boats coming into play later on in the game, but generally an early dock isn't going to be necessary. Let's take a brief moment to introduce the players. So we have Joe Nall playing as the Blue Malians versus J-Dog69, your dog Jesus. He's going to be playing as the Purple Celts. Perhaps this will be, depending on how I feel about my quality of commentary, maybe this will be my Celts versus Malians civilization matchup analysis. This is a matchup that I haven't seen too many times before, so I am really looking forward to seeing how this match turns out. We're going to start off, I think, by talking a little bit about the, the Celts of the civilization. So the Celts are what I would consider to be a very rock-solid tier 2 civilization. They have the faster woodcutting economy bonus, which is really good on all types of maps and for really all types of strategies. It helps with the galley rush for obvious reasons, being able to get the dock up earlier, requiring fewer villagers on wood. It helps with everything, because ultimately you need wood to build farms, so it bolsters all of your strategies. Overall, the civilization has a fairly decent early, mid-game, and late game, but if I had to pick their weakest point, thank you so much Mem for hosting me. Oh my goodness, thank you Mem. Or else to be 99 viewers. So, if I had to pick a point in the game, though, where the Celts are the weakest, it would probably be the, uh, like, kind of the mid to early game. I think that the Celts are the strongest in the late game, and this is due to their the way their tech tree is structured. They have some of the best siege in the game, with the, uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but Furor Celtica, that gives their siege weapons 40% extra HP. And this gives them one hell of a death ball. The Celts are known in the late game for their Halberdier plus Siege Onager death ball, uh, which can be quite difficult to counter unless your civilization has Bombard Cannons, for example. So we can take like a super quick look at the uh, uh, their tech tree, but as you can see here, they have very, very strong Siege Line. And if we go to the Malians real fast, the Malians have a very strong early game economy, which I'll go over quickly, but here's the notable thing. The Malians actually do have Bombard Cannons. And when you're dealing with that Celts Siege Onager Death Ball, Bombard Cannons are the safest way to snipe them from a distance, because your own Siege Onagers aren't going to trade very favorably. So even though the Malians have fairly decent Siege, the important thing to note here is that they actually have Bombard Cannons. So I feel like the Malians can actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Celts late game. And in fact, I think that the Malians are just favored at almost every point in the game here. And the Malians have a reasonably small advantage throughout the game. So why is this? The 15% wood discount on buildings is a lot worse than the faster wood cutting for the Celts. But when you combine that with the free gold mining upgrades, what that does is that gives the Malians a really overbearing dark and feudal age where uh, their archer rush is quite powerful, it makes their castle age boom really nice, it bolsters their knights, their crossbows. Uh, I think that it's just a more aggressive bonus overall. And then as we get into the late game, thankfully the Malians have the tools to deal with the Celts. If you're not a siege under civil, if you're not a bombard can civilization, it can actually be quite difficult to deal with that Celts death ball. And in that case, you need to rely on using some cavalry units to charge down the onagers while you simultaneously have some units at the back uh, to deal with the halberdiers. So you only like a combination of units. Uh, but thankfully, he doesn't have to rely on that. I do think though that the Celts can be competitive here, uh, and that we're not going to see. We're probably not going to see things like Gabitos. I think the Gabitos, you can use them as a way to uh, deter the opponent from making Halberd Deers, but mm, I don't know. Gabitos do get uh, clobbered by that, that Siege 
I feel like, though, that these players could go for a wide variety of units, uh, more so than actually just going for a, a siege-style infantry push. The the Malians have the plus one pierce armor on their infantry starting in the Feudal Age, and then they get another one in the Castle Age and another one in the Imperial Age. I hate playing against this bonus a lot. It's super, super powerful. In the, oh, God, do you think it lost a villager? It's super powerful in the Imperial Age. I don't think that's going to be that relevant here, because really the Celts don't rely on their archer range at all past the super-duper early game. Where their crossman rush is good, boost, uh, bolstered by the faster woodcutting, but I don't know. Uh, the Malians are going to be missing out on one of the major strengths of their tech tree, and the lack of halberd years does mean that I don't know. In a no gold situation, I feel like the Celts will do just fine. Uh, we could even see things like wood graders, uh, but it depends if the Malians end up going for hand cannoneers or something. Very interesting. The fact that the Malians actually have gunpowder. Uh, really pushes them, like, really pushes them over the edge of the civilization and makes them super-duper strong. Uh, if they didn't actually have access to gunpowder, it'd be a very different game here. So j Dog, putting down a barracks, putting down a mining camp. He might actually just be going for a fast castle age, but he hasn't really revealed his hand yet. Or maybe this is going to be an archer push? Not clear. Uh, Joe Naldo, putting down a dock. Okay. Uh, as long as he doesn't make more than two fishing ships, I think he's going to be fine. Ooh, losing the scout does deny him a lot of valuable scouting information, but I think it evens out because Jomnal lost a villager early on. Jomnal going to be going for a uh, a rush, maybe into men at arms. Oh, interesting. This villager here, what's he going to do? Is he going to drop some towers? He doesn't make more fishing ships. This is probably fine, but I don't think there's enough fish to warrant this. I actually do think that this dock was probably a mistake, but uh, there's another tile of fish over here. So actually, no, maybe this is fine. Because this dock was positioned really well. If he built it, like, over here, then there'd be so much... Uh, I don't think he built a third fishing ship, though. It'd just been so much time for the fishing ship to actually drop that off. The distance is too far. Dark Belton says, Malian's tech tree is more diverse than the Celts. Completely agreed. Celts are like an infantry and siege civilization, but... I mean, they, they have good cavalry. But the Malians are just more adaptable overall. I think their Imperial Age archery range is pretty bad with the, uh, like, lack of bracer. That's a, that's a fairly large drawback, and the lack of halberd deer really, really is terrible, too. But their tech tree is just more open, and I think that having hand cannons, bombard cannons makes a huge difference in a matchup like this. Still, though, I feel like both of these civilizations have an epically powerful death ball, so they could just end up going even and going toe-to-toe -to -toe with each other. Like, the Celts are no joke with the, uh, the woodcutting bonus, and... Yeah, the Celts have, I guess, like, better straight-up infantry versus other infantry, because we're probably not going to be seeing that many archers from, at least in the late game from both sides. We might see them early game from the Malians and in the mid game. But, yeah, I mean, if this comes down to, like, champions versus champions, or, like, Wode Raiders versus champions, the uh, the Malians are missing Blast Furnace, which is a big loss. So in a champion versus champion fight, the PS armor is not that relevant. Uh, and I, think it'll, I don't think it'll actually help that much. Hmm. Fascinating, fascinating. Shadow says Malians equals Goss, but more attack. I, you can sort of say that. I mean, the Malians are, like, a less exaggerated Goss. Uh, like, the champions from the Malians have less pierce armor overall, but they're better versus melee units. I think that they're somewhat comparable, but the Malians just have a really fairly open tech tree. Like, everything that they have is decent. It just used to be that everything they had was insane. Like, they got a good enough Siege Workshop. What's it going to be? It's going to be Archers. Yeah, we kind of assumed that based off the way his eco was set up, but and I'm going to be honest, J-Dog's build is a bit awkward here. I had to pull off all of his Villagers off of gold to try and put down that Archer range, but here comes the Drush. Still, though, he actually has four Villagers in position to defend this, so he might actually be able to do this. But what is he... He's not building military units. What are we going to see from J-Dog today? There better be something. Okay, now he's queuing up. He's just going for, like, one Archer range opening. This, this feels to me like it's a little bit of a sloppy opening, but what's important to me here is that J-Dog is actually controlling his villagers really well, and poor Joe Nall overcommitting. So even though J-Dog's opening is a bit awkward, and he's kind of pulling a bit of a Resonance 22 feudal economy build, um, he's totally going to get away with it, because he's actually watching his villagers. So Joe Nall gets denied, loses a militia for free, it's just a case of indecision 2012 and an economy balance that doesn't quite make sense. I said 2012, 2017, I mean. You uh, you don't need this many foragers 
if you're going for a double archer range build, uh, he probably wanted a second lumber camp instead. Uh, he probably pull like five of these villagers off and you build a secondary lumber camp. So that's kind of messed up his build a bit, but Jomnal's Drush has been completely ineffective. Now I know what you're thinking. Yeah, Rez, you just said that the Malians have such a strong uh, such a strong early game. What's going on? He's still in the Dark Age. It's the dock and the four fishing ships. He made too many. He had the right idea. I think it is worth it to build the dock and then build two fishing ships here because there was another tile of fish there, but look at all the idle time of these fishing ships. The reason that you build four fishing ships is that that's enough fishing ships to sustain villager production while you're going for a galley rush. He's not doing that. He actually has villagers over here and actually gathering food. This is a big, big wood investment, and for two tiles of fish, I would not make four fishing ships. I probably stuck to two. Because, yeah, it's just a colossal wood investment. Well, here comes the archers. Uh, cool to see him, like, not actually leaving any on the defense, and I think that's fine, because he has all of these uh, villagers grouped up here. Provided he's actually watching his militia, he should be fine. Uh, Joe Null now into the Feudal Age. He has the plus one pierce armor, but his militia does indeed die. And now... He's discovered the fish. j Dog, now applying some pressure. A little bit of a makeshift wall off here from Blue. What's Blue going to go for? He's going to go for Archer Range Blacksmith. There's a lot of villagers on gold. j Dog has set himself up that he could go to the Castle Age fairly soon, but is Jonal going to go Drush Fast Castle? He just might be. Forgot the world didn't end in 2012. It didn't? Jeez, I've been living my life assuming it did. See you, Corbett. Have a, have a good one. All right. Uh, Joe Null is going to pick off a free archer here. Great control. Recognizing that in the early game, every single unit matters. Especially in a matchup like this. But it's great to see that J-Dog is holding on in the early game. And that the Malians aren't really getting the leverage of their strong bonuses. I... I Because I'm thinking about this live. It's interesting. Because, like, the Malians in general, I feel like, have a better early game. But... In this matchup, like, the Malians are, are missing out on a major strength of their civilization that just won't really come into play. The infantry having higher pierce armor. I mean, it helps a little bit in the Feudal Age, but, you know, the Celts are going to transition away from crossbows maybe 25-ish minutes in the game, because they don't get arbs, um, they don't get bracer, they might even be missing thumbring or something, too. But basically, they're, they're archery and just trash for the late game. And the early and mid-game, it's fine. But, yeah, I mean, you don't really get to spam... High Pierce Armor Pikeman and feel good about it as the Malians in this matchup. You don't get to spam those those champions late game. I mean, you might end up doing some of that, but it, it feels like it's a lot of wasted value. Whereas the Celts don't really have to do anything that, that feels worse for them. They get to play to their strengths here. I think that the Halbs plus uh, Siege Death Ball, you're just going to do that. Sometimes, though, as the Celts, you have to be prepared to make knights. Sometimes you have to be prepared to you know, go for some sort of Paladin thing, Hussars, etc. They've got options. Well, we gotta keep our eye on that militia. Big Dog, not really able to get too much damage in. Uh, Joe Null with a nice little quick wall off is gonna get to Castle Age fairly quickly. Ooh, and that's gonna give him the Gold Shaft Mining. I do think, though, that he is not used to the pow the unlimited power. If playing as the Malians, you can actually... I have to do the math, but I believe you can have, like, one fewer villager on gold uh, to compensate for those bonuses. And in this case, you know... Just based off how his economy is going, you probably have, like, two fewer villagers on gold. Horse collar upgrade coming down, and I think that he's just going to go straight for crossbows. Uh, I think that this gives him, like, the natural advantage here. But, yeah, honestly, j -Dog's in a lot of trouble. I'm just wondering, like, hmm. Does it make sense, then, for j -Dog to go for knights? I mean, it just makes the most sense for him to get to Imp, right? I mean, to get to Castle Age. So, j -Dog actually does have enough resources in the bank. Good. And he clicks up immediately. This guy knows exactly what he needs to do to win this game. So, he's going after the Castle Age. Uh, does he have an opportunity to pressure here, or is it a mistake to engage? We're going to find out. I actually think it's a mistake to engage, my heart tells me. Because we know he has a slight military advantage, but if he lost this fight, right? Because we know the Crossman upgrade, like he's on a timer. Crossman upgrade comes out. Uh, Bodkin is probably coming out as well. Yeah, he's got both of them. If you lose that fight, which I think he would because the upgrades would come out so, so quickly, then you're just completely screwed. Completely screwed. Because your opponent has a tech advantage and you have no military in it, so he's going to have to pull back. Uh, hey, you were the bows. Welcome. He says, I just joined from work. What did I miss? You're, uh, you missed a really good 3v3 Black Forest game. Uh, but... Oh, God, you're also... But you're here just in time for the Titanic. No, so many. 
So many archers going down the drain. This is awful. You do not want to be transitioning to the Castle Age with no archers to upgrade into crossbowmen. These guys, Joe Null's been watching my videos. He knows how important it is to exploit that power spike. Make sure that you have those upgrades. But there's going to be no momentum swing. All this, oh god. All those archers going down the drain. Look at this HD unit pathing. Disaster. If he loses every single archer, I mean, what do you do in a situation like this? This is what you do. Is this 3D chess? We'll have to find out. How do I feel about the galley? I think it's fine, but maybe not necessary. I mean, because he can't raid any economy with this. But I can see why he would do that. Does Jomal know these stables are here? I'm sure he doesn't. Oh, and that's why he built them over here. These aren't, like, perfectly positioned to be hidden, but... I don't know, this could be 3D chess. Let's think about it for a minute. Crossmen are moving in. Purple, our Celts player, has two kind of forward stables. Did he perhaps bait Joe Null into making crossbowmen and now gets to clean up this army? Methinks yes. We'll see. J Dog, queuing up nice. He's got the economy for this. <sighs> He's gonna have to be very careful with this engagement. If he like miss micros this and he ends up engaging with two knights instead of three or four, he just loses the game straight up. Uh, he also will want scale barding armor first. Lack of bloodlines is a huge loss. Should be able to clean this up. Just the question is, is oh, what do I think of this? J Dog. Okay, he has plus one in both attack and defense, but he's not defending. What do I think of this? Well, honestly, uh, Joe Nall is spending so much time walking around this like conveniently shaped uh, tree line that I mean, it might buy him enough time that he might get this town center up before those crossmen walk all the way around. Going offensively with the knights, I would not have done that. But then again, I am a more defensive player. My heart tells me this is not right, and he should have defended, because I don't think this town center will come up in time, and he doesn't have a defensive siege workshop. This would work if he had a defensive siege workshop, mind you, and the faster firing rate on the siege weapons uh, is just fantastic, but... Hmm... It really helps versus those crossbowmen. Oh, jeez, he might not get this town center up. Ugh, but you have to force it! You're at 93%! Alright, well, okay, he's going to deny... A house. That's something. No, oh, but the town center's not gonna go up. Oh no, this is it. Oh, it's such a, so bad for him. Oh, I would not have gone offensively there. Ah, uh, uh, but if it worked out though, that would have looked really nice, wouldn't it? So, all right, here's the thing. Making a defensive siege workshop now is a mistake. You don't have enough wood to build a mangonel once you build it. Uh, and I don't think he has a market. So, I mean, what, what do you do in a situation like this? Well, you hope that you can even out the damage, but I don't, I don't think you can. I think this was a big misplay. Uh, obviously, it's really easy for us to do this as a spectator. I'm pointing this out because I think that j dog has been making some great plays. He's great control. But I'm pointing this out for your own reference. In a situation like this, where your opponent gets the Castle Age first, you really want to stop those crossmen from reaching that critical mass where they have enough that they can pick off your knights before your knights get into range. When the matchup between uh, knights versus crossbows flips around based off the quantity of them. So, I think he did want to defend. I think this was just... There's only 10 crossbows. <sighs> is he sustaining so much eco damage? Like, he has literally no lumber camp, no gold mine. I mean, this was a huge, huge gamble. And he almost got away with it, too, because of the way the trade line was set up. He got, 90, he got away 96% of the way there. And this game's not over yet, though, because J-Dog has... I mean, I can't say the advantageous unit in this situation, but kinda. If he can control this nicely and, like, pull back the knight... Good focus fire by Joe Null. Oh no! J Dog! Can he engage? Only one. Pierce armor. Not good enough. No bloodlines. Superior control by Joe Null. Everything falling apart at the seams. Malians are winning! Winning! <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I feel like in a situation like this. Mm, I think that you always. I mean, one of the ways you win in Age of Empires 2 is you force your opponent to be in situations where they're not taking advantage, they're not able to easily leverage their Civ's strengths. And in this case, I feel like the Malians are super advantaged if you go for knights because you don't have bloodlines. Your knights still don't have great longevity. Uh, and the Celts, they've got the faster firing siege weapons, they've got the wood cutting bonus, they got a really great siege workshop. Oh, oh, but maybe this is the break he's looking for. This is the break he's looking for. He's in this game still. Yeah, he's picking off the crossbows. 
None of you saw this coming. Absolute disaster. <laughs> what? Nice. Nice. It was a trap the whole time. You see how Jovenal's thinking like 25 moves ahead of his opponent? Good lord. That's what I'm talking about. He stacked all these villagers just to bait Jovenal into going this deep with the crossbows. Then he finishes the town center. Jovenal can't escape. This town center is blocking it. <laughs> We're in this game. But anyway, I, I think if you're the Celts in this matchup, I think you can maybe beat the Malians in Castle Age with your Mangonels. Like, the faster firing siege weapon is crazy. Uh, and those crossbow fights. And you get to better use your woodcutting bonus, I think, by going for crossbows. I feel like that's better. Uh, you can go for crossbows. I think that what I would go in this matchup if I was Celts, and it's going to be situational. It depends what the Malians go for. I think I like crossbows plus the elite skirms plus Mangonels. I think is what I like. Well, speak of the devil, here comes the Mangonel, but ah! This is why the uh, stable positioning was potentially suspect. We're seeing just... So many, so many, like, Titanic and the reverse Titanic. Uh, he's gonna have a lot of difficulty reinforcing his own army, and then the stables can just get surrounded by walls. He has to keep these, uh... It's nice alive. Can our Celts player defend? I mean, that was a pretty decisive victory versus those crossbows, but Jomnal has a very, very large army. And I really... Oh. Everyone says debated. <laughs> so many debates. See, 1800, 1800 plus AE2 HD is... There's more debates, and there are more dimensions to this chess game than there are in the Viper versus Doubt. Those guys are playing, like, 4D chess. These guys are playing 5D chess. I, I mean, okay, good. I was going to say, if he puts down another town center here, maybe he can win this game. J-Dog, saturating this gold mine with another mining camp on the back. He has to be so careful. Okay, this game is over, and Jomnal will win unless J-Dog has better control. Will he choke? That is the question. Is this another debate? <laughs> okay, it says reverse Titanic, so a ship re-emerging from under the water. Yes. Call the move resbated. Should we have a resbate emote? I would like that. I do joke about 4D chess a lot. Basically, if you... Nice. Look at this bait. <laughs> the trick is to feign confidence, my friends. Fake it till you make it. Pretend like everything you do in Age of Empires 2 was completely intentional. <laughs> did, you do, did you lose a lot of villagers, but something managed to work out and you pick off those crossbows? Completely intentional. You're just thinking 25 moves ahead. Your opponents will fear you if you have the confidence. <laughs> of course, I am joking. Uh, you definitely want to be self-critical of your own play, always evaluating that, making sure that you can uh, always do things better. Uh, I do think, though, that Purple... God, if he can... <sighs> if he can control this well and not suicide his knights and get a good Mangonel shot or just not lose his Mangonels, he's in the game. He's in the game. He can boom back. He just has to not choke. Wheelbarrow coming down. Sustaining village production. j Dog is playing a very classic Resonance 22 game here. With the Jabates. Here comes the market. Nice. If he wins this game, I'm going to be so proud of him. Come on. Bait these in. Nice. A little bit of chip damage. Nice chip, nice chip. You just have to do this... I'm not good at math, but my estimate is he's going to have to do a little bit of chip damage like that, like... 50 more times and he might win this fight. Ooh. Do we see the flexing? Ooh! Deer is down! Joe Nall, not content to commit to this fight. Dude, all j Dog needs to do is stall. All he needs to do is stall. See, see this? Look at this recovery. Not getting housed here. j Dog transitioning straight into handcart. The flex. Joe Nall on the retreat. j Dog in the game. Me a chess emote? Let's do it. I actually really like that. <laughs> Somebody called Peter the Deer's down. Jomnal the King. Showing us the Celts are indeed favored here. This is a six Civ matchup video. If you guys have been enjoying this, please do share it around and leave a thumbs up. Helps me out a lot. I also really appreciate those of you who take the time to share your support for content I do for games beyond just Age of Empires 2. Really helps longevity of the channel. Helps me be able to create more AoE2 content. And just introduce more people to the game. So... What do you do when you butcher everything and you're not exactly sure what you're doing? Focus on the economy a little bit. I mean, you need to make some military units, but here, after going into knights, uh, I think J-Dog is transitioning out of this really correctly. Like, 
you wanted to build the additional town centers, go for the defensive play, because you're not going to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe crossbows versus crossbows here. You want to go for the defensive mangonels, build a bunch of town centers, hopefully keep them all going. Yeah, he's up to four TCs. That's my boy. He knows that the only way you can win this game is by keeping up on the eco side. Now, I imagine that Joe Null is probably ahead, and I'm a little afraid to do this. 78-2. Hopefully no one saw that. That's pretty bad. Ooh. Oh, Molly's of a disgusting economy. Like, do you guys remember the the good old days? I say good old days, yeah, of course, purely sarcastically, where the Mollyans 15% building discount applied to farms. That was insane. And of course, they also had halberd years, but that was absolutely bad shit insane. That was so 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 strong. And go to imp, go to imp, J Dog, destroy this man. I hate the Mollyans. Destroy this man. Do it. Of course, I love Jomno. I love playing with him. He's a great player. Uh, it's just really fun to... It's fun to see the Malians lose. Unless I'm playing as them, but... Uh, I hate playing against the Civilization. They like It's like playing versus the Goss, that if the Goss were... A lot harder to deal with and consistently more effective. So... J-Dog's eco is really tiny. Uh, but he's also... I mean, he's actually probably about even on economy, honestly, with Jomno. It's just that... Uh, Jomno has a significant advantage in terms of military size. So J-Dog is advancing now. They're both advancing at the same time. Oh my god, he can win this game! Yes! Yes! <laughs> he can do this! He can do this! Make the siege weapons! That castle placement is acceptable but risky. Mostly because we know the game is going to imp. I would have put it here. Because this is uh, easier to trap. Now, I mention castle placement a lot in my videos because uh, I think that... I mean, Age of Empires 2 is a game with so much depth, which makes it such an interesting game for me to play after all these years. I've been playing it since I was seven years old, and I'm always learning new things. And something as simple as where you put your castles honestly wins and loses games. It decides them. And a castle placement like this, you want it to protect your farms. While this zones back the crossbows, I think ultimately I would have put it over here just because it's way too easily trapped. Joe Nall building a forward castle. If these villagers get sniped by that mangonel, that's going to be a disaster. Is he going to get the pick off? Uh, sort of. Kind of. Sort of. Oh, but, but, but is this a debate? How old? Oh, 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 it is. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> I'm having so much fun this game. This game is sick. Yeah, that's right. Defensive play for the win. Nah, this game... Okay, I love Age of Empires 2. Because Age of Empires 2 has so many, like, natural comeback mechanics. So just the, the natural course of the game feels so good to me. Where Jonal applying that crossman pressure. But, like, Mangonels are such a skill-intensive comeback mechanic, and that's my boy! That's my boy! Another one, he says. Another one! Ah, uh, but alas, he's losing a lot of knights here. I don't know. This is, this is a pretty close game. But... Jomnal has to be really careful, and now we're seeing the one of the weaknesses of the Malians. Yeah, I know that I know they actually have weaknesses. They do, I swear. Um, ah, Jomnal getting some chip damage. What, what, what's this control? Ah, it wasn't the bait. <laughs> nice split. Nice little split here. Look at this guy doing some matrix dodging. Oh shit! All right, never mind. Ooh, spicy plays. Spicy Jukes, Joe Nall wins this fight and he's gonna get the castle up. Well played, Joe Nall. Seriously, that's like the that's an adrenaline pumping situation right there. I would hate to be in Joe Nall's shoes. God, when you got a couple elite skirms, because that, that that means that you're on a timer, right? Because the longer that you spend dancing around those mangonels, you're taking all those elite skirm shots. He has to be careful about this mangonel shot here. But the decisive moment, he gets the castle up. He's gonna start the trebs. Is he gonna get the first treb out? Is the guy who has the initiative there? Has a huge advantage. No, he's not going to get the first treb out. Yeah, but he's going to pick up a mangonel. <laughs> huh. Age of Empires 2 is also so much more fun to watch if you assume that everything the players do was planned out and they've just... They're thinking, like, 30 minutes ahead. <laughs> they're doing the expanding brain memes all the time. So much more fun. Especially if you're watching lower-rated players and you just assume that everything is intentional and that... This is the new meta. Nice. Well, J Dog getting the first tread out here. I mean, is Joe Null overextending? Yes. Ah, uh, Arbalist with no bracer. Sucks to be you, my friend. Sucks to be you. 
But then again, no bracer in these elite skirms means that uh, we're dealing with garbage versus garbage. I think this forward was too much, but Jomnal still with a pretty significant lead. This forward is over. He's gonna have to pull back. We're shaping up for a GG here, nice. One of the things that would really help me out, uh, if you guys are interested, is I'm really trying to use Facebook and Twitter more often. And I know that, I actually don't know how many of you actually use Facebook and Twitter, but uh, if you do, please do take a moment to uh, give those a follow. I'm really trying to use those uh, and gain a bit of a following there. And yeah, I just appreciate the, the support in general. Well, Joe Null perhaps overstaying his welcome. This forward did not work out for him, and now he's going to have to regroup and transition to something else. What a sick game. What a sick, sick, sick game. Okay. What's going to happen now? Two and a swordsman. Spicy. Too spicy? Hmm. See, this is what I'm talking about. This is the counter. You bait the Celts into making elite skirms? And Manganels, you come in with a two-handed swordsman? I mean, I don't know. I... J-Dog does not have a good answer to these two-handed swordsmen. Uh, that should mop up this army entirely. So... Yeah. Maybe it'll work. I think I like light cavalry, though, or knights better, or cavaliers. Oh, staggered formation, please! Oof. Oh, and also the main reason we're playing on Salt Marsh is for the, the splash. This is one of my favorite sound effects in this game. Ooh. Uh, and also because I think that uh, at this point in the game it makes sense to make ships. To block off this little river, but they don't have to. So another good onager shot for J-Dog. Clawing his way back in the game, has to be careful not to kill his own treb. <laughs> Fearless. Unbreakable. Well, oh, Joe Null with another castle, this time in the middle island. Can make a couple galleys. I think it's a very good play from Joe Null. Another villager goes down. Saving these stables. Not bad, not bad. Mine slowly being moved forward. What will Joe Null transition into? Looks like he's going for trash and siege. This guy, I mean, what will J Dog transition into? Man, this is like every game at AoE 2 I, I, I play. <laughs> it's like every game where, uh, I defend against, ooh, some super aggressive rush, uh, but then a little bit of spaghetti in the, in like the early to mid game and I'm behind, so I end up building a bunch of town centers, some mangonels on the defense, I end up outbooming my opponent, and then just steadily outvaluing them with superior late game, uh, late game control. Because as the game drags on and there are more and more units that you have access to and more resources, I feel like uh, I have so much game experience that I'm just able to transition into the units that I need to, and then make the ones in the right situations. It takes a lot of practice to get a hold of that. And it looks like J-Dog is just doing a great job with this. And uh, Jonal perhaps getting cut off guard here. I mean, I just... The champions are, are actually very good versus this army. It's just I wonder if this doesn't favor him in the long run, because then J-Dog can transition into his superior infantry units, and he already has the barracks. And also, those units are super duper weak to the onagers if the if the good shot comes off. I mean, I feel like there was an opportunity for cavalry. I also feel like there's an opportunity here for bard cannons. No real easy answer here. J-Dog does not have siege engineers yet. So, oh my god, thank you so much, Pythov, for the $50. Thank you, man. Seriously, he says thanks for his year to grade. Thank you, Pythov. Uh, I... I it really means a lot to me. You, I have really one of the best viewer bases on YouTube and Twitch. And, and even though... Even though the stream now is a lot smaller than it used to be, you guys you guys are worth twice as many as the average Joe. Thank you. That's super nice of you. It really helps out a lot. Didn't realize how expensive being an adult is, or how much time it takes up. So, we see here that the champions are very good versus the mass trash plus onagers. He just is going to have trouble getting into range. So, uh, I like the champion's play only if you have an answer to the onagers, and he does not. And he kind of revealed his hand a little bit early. Oh, what the- what is this? Whoa, what is this? I don't know what this is. I also like the boats. The boats do die very quickly to pikes. Okay, I guess because they poke a hole in the hole. But... I don't know, Jonal throwing away a couple of units. Uh, needs to mass up his army, come up with an answer to these onagers. I just think that, you know, if you go for champions plus bombard cannons, I think that's fine. But also some boats would be good, too. I mean, he... Honestly, J-Dog's push is really, really slow, so Jomnal has plenty of an opportunity to 
build the appropriate units for the situation if he wants. <laughs> Holding the whole hype. <laughs> hey, welcome to the stream, LB. Hello, Morat48 and Dota Pro. Hey, Dota Pro Gamer, good to see ya. And Bastard666, Peter Sem, welcome to the stream, guys. Pikes do have a bonus damage versus ships, yes. Sea Catharsis, hey, Bob Jimmy, as well. <laughs> oh, me, oh, my. He's engaging here without the rest of his army. Huh? Well, I, I mean, I say that, but yeah, I see a little bit of flexing going on here. Just getting away with this? I mean, if he picks off another Onager, that's that's pretty sick. I mean, look how look how shitty this this weak value army is from, from J Dog. It's like it. Ooh, okay, a little bit of team killing action. Nice. Wow, that that worked. Are you kidding me? I li I like this army comp from Purple because it saves a lot of gold in the long run. And in a one v one, it it really comes down to thinking ahead is important. Because gold is a finite resource, I mean, yeah, you can use the market and relics matter, but you, you really want to make sure that you're trading favorably. And early game exchanges that go well for you can really have a ripple effect throughout the entire game. What the hell, Jonal cleans up that army, nice, without using half of it. Just goes so the champions were a really good choice. I just wonder if this works out for you in the long run, because you're committing a lot of money to upgrades here for something that ultimately gets just shot on by Wode Raiders. And uh, the opposing champions. So I don't know if this will work out for in the, in the long run, but... Nice control here, though. Doesn't lose too many of these for free. Perhaps J-Dog is being pushed into teching into too many different things. He doesn't have enough upgrades for this. Like, no Siege Onager, no Siege Engineers or anything, but Siege Engineers he can wait a little bit for, but... It's interesting to see no Bombard Cannons out from blue... Good to see him not making hand cannoneers, though. I mean, normally I feel like hand cannoneers plus bombard cannons is just a really solid opening for the Malians, especially with the chemistry researching 80% faster, but not in this matchup, I don't think, no. Hand cannoneers, situational. Because you really have to watch out for the, uh, the Onagers. No fear of Celtica out, uh, either. What are your great stats? Cannon Galleon's coming down, too. This is shaping up to be a long, really, really good game. Nice. Hey, Weezer fan. And uh, Tribunus Pletus. These guys are about 1850, 1880-ish. <laughs> Thank you so much, Pythos. Necrolamp says, I remember I hated champions as a kid because the two-handed swordsmen looked so much cooler. That seems to be the common sentiment, that two-handed swordsmen look way cooler than champions. What do you guys think? Yeah, I, I, I kind of feel that. The champions look cool, too. So, we're in a little bit of a stalemate situation. Cannon Galleons, eh? Well, neither of these civs have bracers, so their ships aren't that great. Town patrol, champions being created, but I think both of them have elite cannon galleons, so they can use that to attack the other uh, castles and everything. I don't think elite cannon galleons are honestly that great on a map like this, just because the body of water is so large that the uh, you, know, you want to use cannon galleons to like siege your opponent's buildings once you have that kind of map control that you can do that. But versus units, I don't think this is that great. Maybe I just make normal galleons? I don't really know. We'd like to see caravels, but yeah, Portuguese only. So here we're seeing uh, the strength of Malian's champions coming into play. Again, something I didn't think would really come into play this matchup. But when you are allowing your opponent to play to his strengths, and in which purple is in a, in a position where blue is allowed to play to his strengths, well, you see, that's how you win Age of Empires. Huh. This, like, trash plus siege army... Really, really weak versus these champions. I just... Ah, Purple did not have a clean enough answer to this. Like, I, I know I mentioned the Halbs plus Siege Death Ball earlier, but I guess that's assuming that you, you've you already teched into your own champions and World Raiders as kind of like a backup plan for this. But J-Dog, I don't think, is massing up his units enough. Uh, and perhaps wasting some money on these Cannon Galleons, which could be anything else. Oh, man. Oh, me, oh, my. Caught off guard. J-Dog, the shoe on the other foot. Once again. He's getting some good Onager shots off, but... I mean, the Onagers are not good enough versus the champions anymore. It's 50 damage. He needs the 75 from Siege Onagers to pick off the champions in one hit. And the Bombard Cannons are coming down from Jovenal too. Ugh. I think J-Dog is screwed just because he didn't have... I don't know. I mean, Jovenal had the better response here, and I feel like... Ah, three Hussars isn't going to cut it. It's not going to cut it at all, my friend. J-Dog wasn't thinking one move ahead there, actually. He he stopped at the last panel of Expanding Brain, 
and he was thinking five moves ahead, and you need to think six. Because once you set up your opponent to go for uh, champions like this, you need the next answer. Kind of prepared. I mean, we saw this when I did my co-cast with Mem, right? Uh, when the Hunts player opened up with the uh, Halberdiers, but he was simultaneously getting the cavalry upgrades because he knows that then he wants to pull out the Paladins and then win the game from there. So, I don't know, J-Dog didn't have the next answer. Uh, and I think he threw away a lot of his units there, um, of course, unintentionally, and he just doesn't have the upgrades that he needs. This game's not over. I mean, he actually has the higher score, and he's actually doing some raiding. What the hell? Oh. Oh, what? Whoa! Whoa, what, what is this economy? What? I, how did I not notice this? I mean, I saw this blob over here, but... Holy PGG, Batman! What? What? Oh, my eyes! Joe Null, Eco so small you need a microscope to see it, desperately repairing his university so the Hussars don't get in. I say something new every video that I never thought I'd say in Age of Empires history. I mean, if he can hold the line, of course he doesn't have strongholds, I'm assuming. Uh, I mean, I can't tell, but uh, never strongholds. This is a pretty bad Eco. Joe Null's got no money, which means he can't make any more champions. He only has enough money to make arbs, and his arbs have no bracer, which suck. So maybe J-Dog can bleed him dry? I mean, J-Dog's eco is terrible too, but it's it's better. Can he bleed him dry? Can he do this? Because he just doesn't have a good answer to these these trebs, man. Like, when you're in a matchup where... Now, while Siege Engineers can wait, it's again, that's that technology that... Once we're getting to that, like, mid to late Imperial Age, you can wait on it, but people forget it. And I'm going to keep bringing it up until I see people remembering it, and I think that people are getting better at it. Ooh, nice engagement here with the Hussars, perhaps. The Engineers thing is really important here. Uh, when you're dealing with Bombard Cannons. Oh, what the fuck? Is he really gonna- is he gonna win this battle? Is he gonna win this battle? Come on, no way. No way! This is why I hate the Malians, though. Look at the- look at the efficiency of these guys in rating. Oh, I- I, I still don't know about this, though. Siege Engineers is, is really important uh, versus Bombard Cannons because you want to make sure that you are able to get in range to actually snipe these off. The Bombard Cannons get the first shot, which they almost always will. Yeah, it can be a lot harder. Well, he's picking off the Villagers, he's stalling this push, but he didn't decisively win that battle. J-Dog is still in this game. Did so much damage to this eco. I mean, critically, he got all these farmers idle so that Jomnal is having a lot of trouble sustaining champion production, but... J-Dog also has a very, very weak economy. I mean, Jonal's dropped down to 114 population with 90 food in the bank. J-Dog at 125. Such an even game, but he has 10,000 wood in the bank. Hot damn. Versus every prediction resonance uh, by today. Every prediction by resonance 22 today is wrong. Indeed. That's what makes it so interesting, uh, is that there's a lot of angles to this matchup, and it's just nice to see... Uh, I mean, uh, players are ultimately unpredictable. And that's what makes this game have so much depth to it, is that it's a game of incomplete information, and we see here that these players are struggling to adjust to each other. But that's why I go over all the options at uh, everyone's disposal, and I talk about how I think the game should play out, and then of course, Hussars mop up everything, what the fuck. <laughs> not bad, not bad, my friend. Speaking of upgrades that aren't that important, but people forget all the time, I think it's about time for masonry. Never masonry. Or hoardings. I mean, I don't get masonry either, but it's super cheap, and it really helps versus these kind of pushes. Uh, it's just a super cheap technology. Get masonry. <laughs> so much wood in the bank. Good to see him selling it, though. That's my boy J-Dog. Leveraging that market. But you gotta make something to beat these champions. I mean, right now, it's just the cripple fight of the century. These two slapping each other with wet noodles. I want to see real units. Show me some muscle. That's one Woad Raider. It's not enough. More farmers, more villagers, more dots, more dots. Shift Q villagers. If you do not have... <laughs> if you don't have enough, uh... Resources to sustain military production consistently, then you just don't have enough villagers. And he just doesn't. Or he doesn't have enough military buildings, but I guarantee you, he's gonna spend all that food so very easily. How many farmers does he have? 50. He actually needs more, though. It's just gonna vary from situation to situation. A lot of AWT you gotta play by ear, and ah... Now we're getting to the part where my predictions are totally in here. And it's Joe Nall is running out of gold, probably, and now he must transition into shitty pikemen with high pierce armor. Once again, pierce armor, I mean, it helps versus the Skarns. That's certainly relevant, cannot be understated. 
Skarms have a small attack bonus versus Pikeman, though, so it's really, like, not that amazing. It helps a bit. But Skarms do have a small attack bonus versus Pikeman, uh, and the attack bonus is applied, like, after the minimum damage, so... I mean, this is the same reason why padded archer armor in, like, a Skarm v. Skarm fight doesn't help that much. Uh, but padded archer armor is, like, super helpful if your opponent is going for, like, archers and you have Skarms. Just one example, but... I don't know, I don't think the pikemen are that strong for the Malians in this case, and he doesn't have too much of a choice. j Dog showing us that Raiding is another great equalizer, just not taking any direct fights. I mean, I, hopefully he's creating space so that he can build something to answer these champions, right? Like he can mass up more world raiders, make champions of his own, and he should be fine. So now we're transitioning to that, that phase of the game where I think the Celts are going to win. What? This is one of the best 1v1s I've seen on my stream in a long time. Nice. I'm going to stream uh, Plo Crew. Good to see you. Blackman says, can you make a short five-second video where it's you yelling, the Molly Arbs don't get bracer, don't mask them? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm just, I'm the PSA guy. And uh, the public service announcement from today is... Uh, some units for civs don't have longevity to them. They don't. Uh, Molly and Arbalest, like, missing bracer is a big downside. It is. I think that the Malians are the type of Civ where, in the early Imperial Age, their Arbs are great just due to the way their eco bonuses match up uh, and how you can get to the Imperial Age pretty quickly off the back of that. But as the game drags on, it's going to be one of those like fringe useful things, but generally not so great. Bring in a single Pikeman. I mean, Pikeman have, I think it's like 22 attack bonus versus Cavalry units, and then I think the Halberd is like 33 or something, or it might be higher than that or close to that. Regardless, like, the difference... My point is the difference in attack bonuses is, is really significant. And also just the flat two damage that uh, Halberdiers get over Pikemen. Means in the late game, in the Pikes versus Helps fight, the Helps are just going to win. Uh, and the Pikes are a lot weaker versus these Hussars, which the uh, Celts do have access to. Yes, they do. No bloodlines, but that's fine. I mean, provided that he makes enough Wood Raiders to beat these champions, I actually think that we've we've reached the stage where the, the turntables have turned. And the Celts are now ever so slightly favored. Uh... The Malians used to be the jack of all trades and the master of all of them, and now they're a jack of all trades and a master of some. So that's good. Ugh. I think we need more strong infantry units from purple. It's gonna be a close fight. It really just comes down to good control here. If we can get the pikes and the hussars and they attack first before the woad raiders really get in there, which is which is what hap is what's happening. Uh, and yeah, the arbs support. Is a little bit slow, but it's fine. Uh, Bombard Cannon's getting some nice shots. Nice. And, well, we're still in a stalemate. <laughs> it's a long game. Dark Balance says, both the Celts and the Malians have bad archers, but Celts archers are far worse. Totally agreed. Yeah, they don't have arbs, last two archer range, blacksmith text, and thumb ring. Yeah, it's really, really, really bad. So, those have, you just can't make them at all, really, as the Celts. I can't, there are almost no situations I can think of where you would actually want to make crossbows in the Imperial Ages Celts. Ah, his trash is bad too. I just think that if J-Dog is making stronger infantry, he wins this, but he doesn't really have the eco, or or I don't know what's going on here. Like, he's making, he's spending a lot of money on things that aren't champions. Or road raiders. Now, you can just shift sell some, like, wood to get the gold. Like, it's only 20 gold apiece. He's just not making champions. He's making things that the Malians beat with their champions. And we're running into that stage where every penny is precious. Gold running dry. Jomal doesn't have much gold either. You just gotta take him out with your better infantry. I mean, that's the secret to beating the Malians and the Goths, is just use superior infantry units. And that's not happening. Blackwins is time for the Tigui TC push. Oh yes, I wish. Of course, I also encourage you guys- Oh, what's a demo shot? Nice. I encourage you guys to check the ResQuotes subreddit on Reddit. And that's a fairly good shot. Reddit.com forward slash r forward slash uh, R-E-S quotes. ResQuotes. Most rare quotes there, but uh, do make sure to take the time to actually carefully read the sidebar and follow that formatting if that's something you are interested in. Heavy demo ships coming out from the Celts. Oh my god! That shot was huge! Your dog, Jesus69, on fire. Nice. Tato would be proud. Someone clipped that for him so he can watch that later. Because I know that's his favorite thing. Nice little pick off there. Getting that trebuchet killed. Does get converted though by that monk. And now, the pressure is on again. 
And J-Dog doing some raiding still. I mean, that's what's keeping him in the game, right? Like, if you can't win these straight-up fights, keep keep up the raiding. This is some pretty weak raiding, but... Oh, is this why, like, Blue is somehow not dominating this fight? Because he has so much of his army on the left side? I mean, if he can, like, zone J-Dog off wood, that's not gonna matter at all. He's got 13, 14k in the bank. So, thank you so much, Carlini. The four-month resub. He says, Res Think. What do you guys think of the new Res Think emote? <laughs> Hold on to stream, Carlini. And welcome to the stream as well, uh, Niltfair, good to see ya. You guys are witnessing a great game, which I might have to split into two parts, we'll have to see. Which is testing my, my stamina. What a long, crazy match. But, Joe Null, with the Galleons up, which I do think is very cost efficient here from a resource standpoint. You're getting a lot more stats out of your units than you would be if you were making ARBs here. Uh, 90 wood and 30 gold. Gives you... That's a lot of HP. I love the heavy, heavy demolition ships as a comeback mechanic. It's something that you can trade one unit for like 20, but didn't quite work out there. It didn't get into range, and I feel like J-Dog just wasn't able to mass enough infantry, and I think that strong infantry would have been decisive here. Ultimately, getting raided... Oh no, I bumped the thingy. <laughs> My bad. We're back in the right scene. I really want to get that stream deck thing. The guys have seen that. Um, I don't have money for that right now. It turns out that being an adult is incredibly expensive. So at some point, though, I really want one of those stream deck things so I can switch between scenes and add some fancy production quality. I think it's finally GG. I think J-Dog is out of steam. The rating has been very, very effective. He did a great job playing this game. But I think that no amount of heavy demo shots will be enough to claw his way back into this one. As he's going to lose this town center. Joe Noel calling GG! J-Dog has been defeated! That was a, seriously one of the best 1v1s I've seen on stream in a really long time. Please do share it around, leave a thumbs up and a comment if you enjoyed it. Helps out a lot. Yes. J-Dog's just so sloppy. What I love about these like 1800-ish uh, rated games in HD is these are players that do so many things extremely well, but not everything well. So there's just like that extra added amount of uh, unpredictability. And I think that there's a lot that we can learn. Uh, from seeing the things that they execute on extremely nicely, and it's like a more relatable thing to watch. Um, as well as the areas that they can improve to improve your own level of play. If you guys enjoyed this, I have plenty more Age of Empires 2 videos on my YouTube channel, as well as videos for other games. We've got expert Age of Empires 2 tournaments on the expansions, tutorials, pro games, everything you need to learn the game. Uh, feel free to search around the channel for any sort of topical things of your choice. GG! And in the Molly and Civ overview, if you want to be the next Joe Null. You can, it's really a testament to how close this game was when we look at the units killed versus units lost. Joe Null, the largest army of 125, makes me wonder if his economy was a bit too small. Uh, but I am imagining that it happened at a point when he lost all of his villagers due to j Dog's Hussar raiding. He didn't replace all of them. One he was converted is really nice. Uh, not being serious with this point, but if you want internet points, which are the only points that matter in life, uh, you want to make sure that you convert one unit every game, because in a lot of games of Age of Empires 2, there are ever, no, there are going to be zero units converted unless it's like a pro game, like a pro 1v1 or something like that, uh, or like it's arena game, for example. But I'd say like a lot of more casual team games, typically zero units converted is very standard, so if you want internet points, always make sure that you convert one unit, just make one monk. Uh, feel good about yourself. Uh, and when you're about to win, uh, what you want to do is you want to build as many buildings as possible that you didn't already have and just start researching like dock technologies and black forest and get all your monastery texts as well boost that score show everybody that you you know your research count was uh, 155 <laughs> try and get as many stars as you can nice it's a really rock solid game here seriously i'm uh very impressed with this i mean look these guys were one second off from their imperial age and if j dog screwed that up and he didn't prioritize the Imperial Light, would have lost. Would have absolutely lost. Great recovery from him. Joan Maul, honestly, maybe should have made a couple more villagers this game. I, I You want at least 100. He had 99, so he's like on the fence, right in the edge. Uh, three relics was fairly significant. Uh, over 2k gold generated is, is huge. So good to see him emphasizing those. And yeah, just a really, really great, uh, great game here from Joan Maul and j -Dog. I'm a stream M999 fan. Res impressed? 
Hey, Stefan B1, welcome to the live stream. Let's see, what time is it right now? It is uh, it's 3.13. Yeah, I have time to play one quick game of Duelist, which I'll do after this, and then we'll end off the stream. Uh, so we'll do a little bit of Duelist after this, as I've done my two games of AoE, and uh, then that's it. So stay t please do stay tuned, stick around for a little bit of Duelist, and we'll be right back after the break. <laughs> 